Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries from one of the most fascinating supermassive black holes out there. Or to be more exact, an ultramassive black hole. One of the most massive ever found. It's probably within the top three. From a relatively large galactic cluster that would sort of resemble this if you were to look at it in the X-rays, or resembling this if looking at this black hole and this region using combined wavelengths. And to date, this is probably one of the stranger black holes out there, definitively located right in the middle of a massive galactic cluster. The cluster known as MS0735, located around 2.5 billion light years away from us. But more specifically, we're going to be focusing on a recent study that came out not so long ago, that essentially analyzed this particular cluster and this region using a somewhat intriguing method, discovering something really interesting about this black hole in the process. Or essentially revealing this region this entire cluster and the black hole itself in a completely different light. In this case, microwave light that basically shows us a really intriguing cavity produced by the pressure from this black hole. And so what exactly is going on here and what have we learned about this cluster from this study and from some of the more recent studies that you can find in the description below. And first I actually wanted to start with another study from not so long ago that basically discovered and confirmed something else in our own galaxy, somewhat related to what we're observing from this distant black hole as well. You might remember that our galaxy has these unusual features known as the Fermi bubbles. These unusual binary formations that seem to stem from the center of the galaxy and actually extend up to about 30,000 light years in every direction. And it's always been speculated that these were most likely caused by some kind of a really large explosion coming from the central black hole in the Milky Way, or possibly some kind of an active event that must have lasted for some time. But the more recent study analyzing this using computer simulations almost definitively established that this was caused by a relatively long-lasting and very active wind-like phenomenon that lasted for approximately 10 million years and was basically produced by the central black hole. And this phenomenon of galactic wind has actually been found around a lot of different galaxies out there and has definitely existed around our own galaxy as well. Here's one of the more extreme examples from the galaxy known as M82. But in case of the Milky Way galaxy, it was a lot more mild and it very likely ceased to be active quite a long time ago. Here, the phenomenon is very likely quite similar. But it's probably at least 10 to possibly 15 times larger than what we observe in the Milky Way. Possibly even bigger than that. And more importantly, a lot of the recent analysis established that this has been actually going on for approximately 100 million years, so about 10 times longer than in the Milky Way, with some of the modern calculations suggesting that it must have consumed about 600 million solar masses to produce all of this energy for 100 million years. Or in other words, this black hole must have consumed a total mass of a smaller galaxy in order to release all of this energy we're observing and measuring from this particular galaxy. And that's of course a ridiculous amount of energy and a ridiculous amount of mass. And based on the amounts of energy that's being released even today, it also seems to produce some of the brightest and some of the most active galactic regions that we can actually see with modern telescopes. This used to be a record holder, but there might have been another discovery from not so long ago that seems to produce something even brighter. We'll talk about this in some of the future videos. And so the amount of energy released here every single year is equivalent to several gamma ray bursts which are essentially the brightest and the most powerful explosions in the universe. But what can possibly produce this? Well, as you can imagine, a really, really large black hole. With some of the modern calculations suggesting that it could be one of the largest, if not the largest, known to us. With a total mass of about 50 billion suns. Or about 10,000 or actually 12,000 times as massive as the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. Resulting in some of the most extreme environments in the universe, with average temperature of about 50 million degrees Celsius and huge amounts of X-rays, gamma rays and a lot of other radiation emitted from the center. With all of this generating these huge emissions, these very powerful winds, but also generating a lot of other effects, such as the black hole feedback effects, that sometimes are responsible for stopping the star formation, but sometimes have the opposite effect. And so this is actually a pretty fascinating object to study, just to see what effects it has on the nearby galaxies. But moreover, the power of this object can even be seen inside the map of the first light, the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB. And intriguingly, the powerful wind coming from this black hole actually creates unusual cavities visible from 2.5 billion light years away, which was one of the most recent discoveries from the paper you can find in the description. This is based on a very intriguing effect known as the Sunayev-Zeldovich or CZ effect, where the slight distortion in the CMB 
create unusual echoes visible from very far away. And so in this case you can actually see them at a frequency of about 90 GHz and they appear as these very large pressure bubbles that existed here for at least 100 million years. With the study further establishing that it's most likely a combination of thermal effects mixed with the effects from the magnetic fields and the pressure from the cosmic rays as well as overall turbulence that prevents these bubbles from essentially collapsing. When one of the main questions that the scientists are trying to solve is essentially figuring out how much of non-thermal pressure is produced by these black holes. Because it's usually the non-thermal pressure that then leads to the formation of stars and essentially can help the scientists figure out how galaxies evolve and what triggers star formation in certain locations of the universe. But I guess the more intriguing part of the study is just the fact that this was confirmed to be a really 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 massive black hole. So massive that it's visible in the CMB and so huge and so massive that it seems to have created these effects for 100 million years, producing one of the most powerful emissions visible from planet Earth. And if this black hole is indeed about 50 billion solar masses, it's already technically above the theoretical limit for the most massive black hole we believe should exist. Today there is no theory or explanation for how black holes over 50 billion solar masses can exist anywhere. Yet at least three possibly have been discovered in the last few years and so it does create a bit of a theoretical problem. And that's because given the age of the universe and the composition of matter in the universe, the modern theories suggest that there's just not enough time for a black hole to grow so massive even if it continuously consumes matter for 13.8 billion years. Generally, a massive black hole that consumes matter really fast starts to create so much wind that it creates a kind of a balance between the consumption and the emission of energy. And at that limit, if you were to grow a black hole, it would maybe reach the mass of 50 billion. But in this case, this black hole is a little bit more massive. So definitely a bit of a mystery. And that's on top of the fact that these jets may also be some of the most powerful jets coming from a black hole as well. Which makes this galactic cluster extremely intriguing for cosmologists trying to answer all of these questions about black holes and the evolution of the universe. Although at the moment these are just observations and we don't really have any actual answers. And we also have no idea how these black holes affect galaxies around them, if they actually affect star formation or planetary formation, or if life can possibly exist anywhere in the vicinity of these events. At the moment the answer to all these questions seems to be maybe no. Maybe no life, possibly very few planets if any at all, and possibly no star formation either. But at the moment there are no concrete answers just yet. But because we know something similar but on a smaller scale happened in the Milky Way, and of course may happen again in the future, that's why answering these questions potentially might be really important. For example, we know that this happened a few million years ago. So did it actually have any effects on planet Earth? And if so, what kind of effects? And so that's one of the main reasons why studying these particular galactic clusters can actually lead to some important questions about what might have occurred on planet Earth when the Milky Way was a little bit more active as well. In this case, remember this was for about 10 million years. Could this have had some major effects on the planetary atmosphere? But for now we don't really know. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos and we'll also be talking about some of the more massive black holes discovered in the last few years with some that have only been recently identified. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.